When I had first approached this build, I was very enthusiastic about it because I was finally able to add a little more variety to the city skyline of Sim City here. But as I started out with the project, and as you'll see on screen, I did actually kind of run into, I guess, some writer's block at that point, or what the gaming equivalent of that would be, designer's block perhaps. Well, anyways, I'll explain that in just a bit. Now, for those of you just discovering my channel and just discovering my little corner of the internet, my name is Michael, and I want to welcome you to Sovereign Gaming in Life Sims, the YouTube channel where I build worlds, lots, and share my thoughts on video games in the life simulation gaming space. And today we are indeed continuing to build out that lovely sim city project that i've got going on it's a huge project and there's still a lot to be done and today is something that i was very excited for and if you didn't watch the last episode then you wouldn't really know what i'm building but today i am indeed building out a sports bar and this little block of midtown has certainly become like a collection of community lots and i kind of love it for that um and i know that in the beginning like in the guest district episode i had mentioned that there was going to be more variety to midtown as opposed to the downtown lots and that there would be more residential however um, all those residential builds will be happening on the eastern block there so this little western block is just really all community lots and then in the eastern block we'll transition into doing some residential there and then when we whenever we get to uptown um, there will be a lot more residential that I have planned for those build outs but anyways I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here Today we are uh, focusing on a sports bar and what made me really excited for this build like from a I guess from a city planning or from a uh, skyline perspective is that I was finally able to add in a little more variety to the skyline being that this is going to be our first set of low rise buildings and in the next episode when we build out the corner lot I'm going to continue to build another low rise building for that. So there's a couple of reasons why I had decided to make this one just like a set of low rise buildings. And the first was again to add that variety into the skyline, but also to make this street of Midtown not feel so overwhelming and just, you know, um, layering it with tower after tower. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm just kind of offering um, a little bit more visual intrigue into this particular block and in a way that I feel doesn't overwhelm the player when they're actually uh, going to be playing this game and playing this world in terms of, you know, having to compete with other high rise structures and whatnot. So from a playability standpoint, uh, that was another reason why I had to add this in. And I also feel like it's reflective of the real world as well, because downtown and inner city neighborhoods are really a mix of different uh, types of buildings from low rises to mid rises and high rises and really anything in between. And so I really wanted to add that kind of realistic element to it as, along with those uh, gameplay elements that I had described a little earlier. So I am sure that you're kind of wondering what the difference is between low rises, mid rises and high rises. Well, I wondered that too. And if I'm going to be completely transparent, I did a little bit of this research when I was actually building out the SimCity world in the Create a World series. However, I never decided to speak on it just because I didn't have the visuals right in front of me, nor did I build out like an example of each, which at this point, I really have built out an example of each of the different kinds of buildings that cities really have. Now, this is the thing, and I'm going to be throwing up a graphic here. Um, it, the thing is, is that different cities, different regions, different territories, they're all going to have a different definition of what a low rise, a mid rise and a high rise building really encompasses and entails. So. As per the graphic above, this is kind of the guideline that I am following here. But for low rise structures, what I am really looking for um, with the low rise structures is creating buildings that are up to five stories tall in height. And for me, that feels kind of um, for me, I like that kind of height for the low rise structures, whereas 
the mid-rise structures really range from you know anything between six to eight stories in height now in the sims 3 of course we can't build above five floors of course so i've kind of been using the different um i've been kind of using the different roaring heights skyscraper objects uh that you just kind of that you've seen me place multiple times now uh just to sort of represent like mid rises uh that are between like eight to you know 12 stories in height or, or sorry eight to nine stories in height or, or what have you and some of them actually really serve as high rise um high rise structures as well if we go according to the um if we go according to the diagram that i've put up here now why this is important is that these different kind of structural forms really help to make the skyline and the city actually reflect realism in a certain way. And when it comes to Midtown, as the name suggests, what I'm trying to do here uh, between the downtown and the central business district uh, to Midtown is I'm trying to actually taper down the height. So even though we've got some shorter high rise uh, structures, um, sitting in the midtown uh midtown neighborhood what i'm really trying to do is i'm trying to get that mix of mid rises and those shorter high rises in here just so that it actually tapers down in height as we go southwards towards um towards like the south coast of the inner city island now when it comes to actual urban cities and urban layouts and all that, of course, there are going to be pops of height here and there, and that will be represented in some future Midtown builds uh, going forward. And it's also represented in Bridgeview as well with those uh, tower structures there. But when it comes to this particular block, like this is the first time I'm really introducing like a low rise that is about four stories in height. Um, and in this particular sports bar build, this uh, low rise only goes up to four stories in height, whereas, and this is a bit of a spoiler for the next episode, um, but in the next episode, I actually take it up again to five story uh, structures for the next episode. So it kind of gives players that visual variety. It also reflects uh, a bit of realism, in my opinion. And also this kind of helps to hide the side, uh, the Saturn nightclub that is just next door. However, you guys were probably hoping that I'd put a tower right beside it just to completely hide it, but that's not gonna be the case. Uptown is like when I do the Uptown builds, that'll do most of the hiding of the Saturn structure and that I can kind of guarantee there. But yeah, today's sports bar is the first low-rise structure that i've really introduced into the inner city i'm very excited for it just to add in that variety that i keep mentioning to add in that realism that i keep mentioning and just to really again uh try to showcase that this is a real city and it isn't just like a bunch of cluster of towers or um or or shells or those um or those roaring heights uh, skyscraper objects it actually does have some forms and functions that um <laughs> that that are actually buildable and that you can kind of play in and all that now i say that as i know full well that i'm going to be dropping in a bunch of hidden room markers for a bunch of the upper floors but you know that's uh that is something i will continue to explain later on but essentially like the idea for the sports bar for today's structure is really that it is a um, it's like an attached four story uh, tall structure that's attached to a three story tall structure. So really giving heed to that low rise definition um, based on the diagram that I had placed before and uh, really adding in that variety that we really haven't seen before in the inner city neighborhoods. And I feel that it is important to kind of add this variety in such a central and downtown core location because, you know, Midtown, even though it is the transition from like super high density to more of a medium density, um, you know, again, I feel like it is important to have low rise structures exist within that downtown core to give it that realism. Like there's no way, um, like in major cities and even in like medium-sized cities even small cities there's i'm sure there are examples but you can find like four story or five story or even three story tall uh structures that are flanked by skyscrapers for example and perhaps they're even a part of the uh the skyscraper design if they're a newer structure but 
Um, in this case, I really wanted to try to represent something that is a little less new and a little more of like a heritage building. And so that's what I had decided to go with uh, going forward here is just trying to design it and make it look like a set of attached uh, heritage buildings because we really haven't got that. Um, we haven't really got a whole lot of history just kind of like injected into the downtown core with the exception of some of the um, some of the mid-rise structures that I built for the condo and the uh, Champagne's exclusive lounge. But um, with this one having a much smaller footprint, it actually feels more true to that heritage form, in my opinion. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't any tall heritage structures out there. I'm just saying that um, it's nice to get like a low-rise heritage structure in the middle of the city that, you know, perhaps the city's looking to redevelop sometime in the future or perhaps they're going to look to add like some sort of a skyscraper on top but that time just really hasn't come yet and it's a structure that um citizen well sims and <laughs> sim citizens i suppose can enjoy for the time being and that it does serve as that little moment of history that hasn't necessarily been redeveloped or swallowed by the city entirely that was kind of the vision of the structure going forward and it will also be a vision that i continue for the next episode over when i actually build out the corner lot um for that as well but i'll speak a little i'll try to speak a little more about uh the next episode towards the end of uh this episode here so yeah i was very excited to get sim city's first inner city low-rise structure which is a mouthful in of itself uh built in the city just to really show that there is a uh, there is a, a logical flow of some sort uh when it comes to me building out the urban inner city neighborhoods and uh the structures that really inhabit it now when it comes to the exterior of the building here again it's a four-story low rise attached to a three-story low rise i really do go through quite a bit of a journey to just kind of figure out what kind of a look and feel that I was going for. Essentially, I really wanted the building to read that it was indeed a mixed use building and that there were multiple entrances that could theoretically be accessed by other Sims if the other floors were playable and all that. And one thing that you guys are really going to see me uh, kind of go through on a journey i suppose or uh, just struggle with i suppose if i want to be critical of myself is the interior design of it now i've always wanted it to be i've always wanted this bar to be a uh, a rooftop bar i wanted the rooftop on the top of the third floor on the um on the eastern structure to just be a place where sims can gather and just kind of hang out with um hang out at i suppose and yeah, uh, that was always the vision and that was always the intention going forward. And for some reason, like even though this is just like one rectangular square box, I really struggled with the interior, uh, the interior uh, layout of it all. And um, and yeah, you'll really see me like place the bathroom towards the south end of the building. Then it'll move to like the west or sorry, to the east side of the building and move it to the west, uh, the western wall. It's it's a whole journey in of itself. And honestly, uh, as I was building the structure, even though I was very excited to get my first low rise structure um, built in Sim City, it also had to look right and feel right and function right as well. And um, and yeah, I had to walk away from it a couple of times just to um, just to get just to come back with a fresh perspective on what needs to be done and what needs to be done where. But yeah. I still wanted to have those multiple entrances on the western uh, four-story building uh, just to show that it is a multiple use building in my head i would imagine that because you have this sports bar on the top floor the other uses are likely uh, going to be an office uh, kind of use or maybe yeah just like an office and uh and bar mixed use building here it's not typically um you know, it would be hard to sell even, <laughs> it would be hard to live by some place like this. Not unless of course you're in the Eastern building and I kind of left the Eastern building um, a little ambiguous for that purpose. Um, but yeah, it would be kind of hard to be living in the same building as there is like a popular bar or a popular rooftop bar. Not saying that it doesn't happen, but 
it's a certain noise level that residents would take into consideration no matter from which walk of life you come from even if you are like a young um a young professional or i guess a young student if, if you can afford it um living beside a bar might not be the biggest deal for you but there are going to be times where you do want like a good night's rest and if the bar is open during that time then you know you're gonna have to contend with those uh noise levels regardless and that's kind of why uh, certain building regulations exist as well is to um is to try and make those spaces lovable and all that but i'm kind of getting a little off topic here one thing that i should share with you guys while we're here is that i have called the bar all stars and cowboys and that is because and you probably guessed it this is going to be a country bar indeed i felt like it suits the idea of a sports bar um, more. Uh, yeah, it just suits the idea of a sports bar better, in my opinion. And I can also see that there would be. Yeah, I can just see like a sports bar having a country theme to it. So that's kind of something that I really wanted to lean in towards. And I guess because from my trip from uh, my trip to Texas this last uh, Christmas holiday, uh, it was something that was still fresh in my mind as well as to uh, as to a certain vibe that I wanted to give to Sim City, anyways. But yeah, um, I decided to call this All Stars and Cowboys. And when it comes to like the actual sports bar things here, it seems like you know I had more of a tendency to decorate more towards the Western themes and all that. And that was another reason why I decided to make it a Western country bar is because we have more access to uh, country western things or country western objects i suppose um another thing about like sports bars and all that like is that it came with the late night expansion pack and you know i've been doing like a little bit of research into the sports bars with um with late night and to me, like, I really don't see, like, too much of a difference between that and, like, the other bars, like a disco club, for example, um, except for maybe being able to, like, watch TV and watch sports and all that. You know, I'm going to actually make a note here uh, and just kind of remind myself out loud just to do a quick little search in between audio takes here. So if I'm wrong on that, I'm going to correct myself in the next couple of minutes or so. But yeah, um... I don't find that there is anything really too unique about a sports bar in the context of The Sims 3 versus other clubs and bars. Um, like to me, it almost feels like a, it almost feels more like a dive bar, but at the same time, um, yeah, it feels more like a dive bar, but at the same time, I just don't feel like there's anything unique that happens within a sports bar, except for like maybe watching TV. And at that point, I'm just, you know, I don't know if that is something significant enough to actually, um, to actually consider for a night out for your Sims and all that. So that's why I really leaned into the country Western themes is because we have an entire, uh, <laughs> bull riding, uh, station from the Sims 3 Showtime. And so I decided to make sure to have that in here so that you can actually give your scene, uh, give your Sims a unique timeout. Um, and, um, <laughs> and yeah, and with the country music and with the country, uh, backdrop and all that, I kind of felt like that those themes were more important to focus on just because there's nothing like too unique offered by the sports bar a designation of the lot itself in general like i think that one can make a legitimate argument that the late night expansion pack introduced too many uh different kinds different classifications of bars um just because in my opinion some of them really aren't too differentiated between each other for example, you have a disco club and also a dance club. Well, what's the difference between the two? And that's kind of hard to really, um, really explain beyond them having different operating hours and such. So, um, so yeah, like the sports bar was kind of the uh, similar situation that I faced myself. Um, here is just like identifying or trying to identify why this classification was actually made for the lot and how to offer that gameplay experience to players without overwhelming them with bars and community lots. And by the way, like this world is honestly huge. It's got like I'm trying to fill it with 
all of the community lots offered by all of the expansion packs with the exception of diving lots of course and uh and yeah this was something that i felt was important enough for the gaming experience so that players can enjoy the entire franchise's worth of content but yeah um the sports bar itself leans into the country themes a lot more just because i felt like the uh, uniqueness of sports bar of the sports bar classification is just kind of diluted by the other different kinds of bars and clubs offered in the late night expansion pack. Just to break the fourth wall again, I did do some research in between audio takes and really there's nothing special about the sports bar. I think that before I was just getting confused between hosting a sports party back in The Sims 2 and needing a TV so that play uh, so that your guests can watch, you know, the sports channel and whatnot. I still added a TV in this build just in case you wanted to add that experience for your Sims and you'll see how that kind of comes about uh, towards I guess maybe towards the end of the episode but anyways yeah when doing uh when refreshing uh what I knew about the Sims 3 late night bar types there really wasn't any uh difference between like a sports bar and a dive bar uh with the exception of sports bars attracting you know Sims that have the athletic trait and perhaps like a celebrity or two or maybe even a vampire apparently they like to visit sports bars so whatever in terms of like the actual experience uh your sims will get like a nightlife experience there really doesn't seem to be too much of a difference between uh this and another bar or a club which is why i decided to build this sports bar with a couple of you know dart throwing activities and also um i gave it a well they call it a juice pond uh, table but we know better if, uh, if you know what I'm saying there and uh, so I gave them a couple of those uh, objects just to kind of separate the nightlife experience from this and like any other kind of nightclub as well so I don't know what I'm going to be doing for the disco nightclub whenever I get around to building that which will be sometime in the uptown neighborhood but I'll cross that bridge when I get there anyways as you would have obviously observed um, essentially the low rise structure here is just a four story, uh, attached low rise that is attached to a three story low rise. And honestly, like, I don't care whether, uh, I don't care that this is in the middle of the city. Um, like these kind of structures are very boring, even though they do fit the context that they are set in. And that's why it was very important for me to really explore uh, detailing it up as much as I possibly could. And that's really why uh, the exterior pipework is coming into play. And I actually did, uh, I did find that adding in some ivy, uh, which started out as an experiment when I was trying to struggle to find <laughs> different details to add in, um, I found that the ivy actually suited the structure very well. And, um, you know, when it comes to wall crawling ivy, it is a certain detail that I don't necessarily want to overdo in my world, but I felt that it fit this lot so well and it helps to like ex uh, show that there is a real history to these two attached low rise structures that I just felt like it made sense for the story of the structure. So I added them in uh, quite liberally to mind you and uh, I felt like I was able to kind of get away with telling that story here with the crawling ivy. And I really like how it all turned out, honestly. I feel like it uh, really helps to explain um, explain the history a little bit. Another detail that I ended up adding is I ended in a large pergola over the rooftop. And on the rooftop, I do plan to add in uh, a couple of more mixology bars there. So mixologists will actually spawn and uh, tend to the bars. And... In my game, I really only play with seven days of winter. As you guys may have known already, I'm not exactly winter's biggest fan, and that includes uh, dealing with winter in my video games. <laughs> and so, um, and so, yeah, I added in a couple of mixology bars over there, and you know, my idea is just like in accordance to my own play style, that if there are mixologists having to work through winter, well, they really only have to suffer through seven days, which is kind of terrible, but hey, that's just kind of how it works. Um, I did have experimented in the past making outdoor bars seasonal. And let me tell you, it actually really screws up your game a lot 
because it'll keep spawning and reassigning NPCs and you already kind of get enough of those issues already uh, with the actual uh, festival grounds lot with the different um, seasonal merchants and the kissing booths and all of that. And so when your game is kind of doing that thing, um, I don't like it personally. I have an unfounded theory actually that it can contribute to corrupting your saves, but there are NROS mods for that kind of thing. Anyways, so I didn't want to complicate the slot any further by making it seasonal. And uh, that's something that I have kept in mind going forward with the other SimCity builds and something that I especially kept in mind here. And even though the pergola uh, kind of shields you a little bit from the uh, winter snow and all that, it obviously won't do it perfectly. But yeah, I decided against um, doing uh, making this a seasonal lot just for the reason that it would spawn mixologists and then uh, it would continue to like spawn them and despawn them depending on how the season changed and all that. And I just didn't, I didn't feel like that was conducive to a good playing experience for myself and for other players as well. But hey, if that is more so your cup of tea, feel free to make this a seasonal lot if you so choose to. Um, speaking of which, this bar actually has quite a few different bartenders. In uh, Saturn, when I was building out that bar, and also with the 13th floor, I really only had like one or two maximum mixologists. This one has four. And I, even though like in those episodes, I was really sharing with you guys how I wanted to try and keep the number of mixologists min as minimal as possible, I felt that for the vision that I was trying to achieve with, um, with all stars and cowboys here that it really warranted two mixologist stations on the outdoor patio and also two mixologist uh bars inside the actual bar itself so it really equated up to four different mixologists that are going to be showing up here uh one thing that i like to do with sports bars actually and i've done this in older games so i actually like to host like bachelor and bachelorette parties in here so I feel like that that can be like a really fun way to uh, to celebrate your Sims if you do play um, the game and all that. And I've, <laughs> you know, since taking on this whole SimCity project, I really haven't played the game at all, to be completely honest with you guys. But yeah, um, when I was designing the patio, I really tried to, you know, the the sources of inspiration and the references that I was using for country bars and all that kept it very and this doesn't surprise me at all, it kept it very, uh, it was very much a natural look or it was a lot of wood to it. So that's really what I tried to stick with is I tried to make it as rustic and as wood-like as possible when doing the interior designs and all that. So that was really an approach that I decided to take. And towards the end of the episode, I actually experimented just a little bit and I'm more curious about what your feedback is on it. Um, but I ended up doing like a wallpaper over the, um, over the oh what do you call it the um oh the coat check area and i use one of the themed uh wallpapers for that that was like a country western theme it feels a little kiddish in my opinion and maybe i just needed to like recolor it or something but i kind of wanted to get your guys's feedback on it if you think that it should remain as that themed wallpaper or if i should be changing it to something else so hopefully i'll have a screenshot um at <laughs> Hopefully I have a screenshot right here, right now, as I'm talking about it, just to get what your thoughts and feelings are on that matter there. Something that I also wanted to mention as well in terms of the exterior design for the low rise structures is that one thing that seems to be functioning more like a crutch for me <laughs> personally is really adding in an outdoor fire escape from a window. Not only do I feel like it adds a certain character to the building, but it also takes up enough space and it adds like a nice visual intrigue. And as opposed to adding it to the back of the building, and in this case, like I did it for both, and I know we're well beyond that point now, um, but I completely forgot to talk about it. But anyways, as opposed to just like adding it to the back of the building, which I had done for the Midtown Grocer, which is uh, just on the Eastern block, I decided to add it to both the front and the back because to me, it kind of uh, made sense to have fire escapes in that kind of way. Now, I'm in no way uh, trying to create some sort of a standard for fire escapes in uh, in my city here, but rather I'm just using like a fire escape structure to help add a certain level of detail to the building. 
The unfortunate part about adding the fire escapes, uh, just with the way that I build them, um, or in this case, uh, just uh, taking into consideration the fact that I don't use spiral staircases, which is something I might be doing in the next episode. But um, when doing the fire escape structures, just with the way that I've built them in this episode, and uh, yeah, they kind of make everything uneven in terms of the windows and what else to place. For this particular case, it actually worked out. And I don't mind not having symmetrical windows like where it makes sense and for the exterior of the low rise structures i felt like it made sense to like i was still able to make it look good without having the windows exactly aligned and symmetrical that's going to be something i really struggle with in the next episode and uh, i'm going to be completely transparent here as well i am in the process of building out the uh building out the next episode and i'm really struggling with the fire escape detailing on that just because it's throwing off the windows um but yeah i'm gonna try with the spiral staircase to see if that does anything there but anyways back to all stairs and cowboys uh, one other place that I, uh, like a couple of places that I really leaned into when trying to decorate the lot was all the stuff from The Sims 3 Pets expansion pack. They added in a lot of great, uh, decor, uh, that was really on brand for, like, rustic decor, and there was a lot of farm decor here and there, so I just tried to utilize that where I could, where it made sense, but also the movie stuff, um stuff pack was added in like a whole western theme in of itself and i used a little bit of the movie stuff pack in the i've used it everywhere really actually um but here it kind of came to play again and i even used that backdrop uh backdrop object a couple of times uh using that western theme just to kind of you know give the brand uh <laughs> just to help like brand all stars and cowboys just a little bit more here and there um i was really trying to introduce that western cowboy feel and of course like the music is going to be changed to country so this is very much that country western bar um that also is classified as a sports bar but whatever i've already kind of talked about that but yeah the sims 3 pets and the movie stuff pack really came in handy here and there's like also some small things here and there that i added as well uh, from other from other like uh, Sims 3 store items. I didn't use a whole lot of CC, uh, yeah, custom content with this, but what I did all came from the Sims 3 store. I think you guys know that by now. Um, but yeah, I was really happy with the way that everything kind of shaped out to be. Um, I did add in a little area to play darts in because I really wanted to give a new activity to this kind of a bar and with the juice uh the juice pond tables um oh, god i've really struggled with that one um with those tables i uh, the juice pond tables i felt that like it again added in an activity that was competitive and befitting for a sports bar that has that uses country western rustic themes it's a little bit of uh, everything here <laughs> um but anyways moving on like the one design choice that i'm really not sure about is really the tv the fireplace i'm okay with just with the way that the fireplace ended up uh, looking like and with the smokestack itself or sorry the chimney itself geez i'm losing my terminology here but the chimney isn't too tall and i actually just kept it because personally i love that smoke effect when it is turned on so i kept the fireplace as it was because that chimney wasn't really uh doing anything um completely offensive to me um, but yeah, the, uh, I, I might change that. That might be something in some sort of an upcoming edit episode that I actually changed, but I'm not entirely sure about the TV itself. Now that I've refreshed what a sports bar actually functions as, I might change the TV area to be something else entirely. Who knows? But I'm also, I can also defend it at the same time. So, you know, I'm going to ask for feedback on that. If you guys wouldn't mind, do you find that the TV is fitting for a sports bar? Or do you think that I need to revisit it with some sort of a new uh, direction there? So yeah, I'll leave that one to you guys there. Um, I did totally forget to put in spawners at the end of this build. So if I haven't added in those already, I am just going to talk to myself here and remind myself to get the spawners in for whenever the Midtown episode uh, the Midtown editing episode is being developed. 
And then lastly, the alleyway itself. Because I had uh, I had shrunk the alleyway from the Gast district, I believe. Yeah, from the Gast district, I needed to keep the alleyway as um, car oriented as possible. So I didn't do a whole lot of touch ups on the alleyway. I just added in some dumpsters and pretty much called it a day. Again, I miss those spawners. So when those spawners come in, they actually add a little bit of life into the alleyways there. And those spawners, of course, will be the roaches or rodents spawners. I don't know which I am going to place there. But yeah, they add in a little bit of movement into, into the alleyway space. And something else that I have totally taken into consideration as well is that if you have a sim that does, or, you know, that does the street art skill, and I think I've spoken about this in the past, but um, if they have the street art skill and they're like tagging buildings and all that, there's plenty of space to do that in the downtown core neighborhoods and I'll continue to have plenty of space there. I mean, on some of the blank walls, I really wish that um, EA had taken it to the next level so you could have like huge wall murals on the sides of buildings that street artists can do and whatnot. But hey, that is not uh, what we were given. We were given, um, you know, they call them large murals and all that. And they're fairly large, but they're not like huge. <laughs> <laughs> which is what I would hope for. But yeah, the uh, your street artists will certainly have a lot of space to, um, to uh, skill up on their street art skill and to also decorate the buildings as well. So that was kind of kept in mind as well. And I would fully expect um, Sims to like take this building or to create a mural on it or what have you. Sometimes I feel like certain interior styles or at least for me, don't really translate as well into the game as we see and appreciate them in real life. And some of those styles, and it's especially evident here, I think, is a rustic or a western style. Industrial styles are another interior decorating style that I find that I sort of struggle with, as well as just like general country vibes. And I know that I've downloaded a lot of the sets from the Sims 3 store just to try to like cover uh, that kind of look and feel as I go forward. But it's really like the floors and the walls that I really struggle with. And I think that when you get your floors and your walls right, um, along with the layout, um, among many other things I should really say, um, but the walls and the floors certainly help to inform me at least of the direction that I wanna take in terms of the uh, different creative focal points that I want to create for each of the rooms and the different story that I want to tell when actually decorating these kind of lots out. And with the Western and country themes, like I know it's just wood on wood, but I find that the form that the floors and the walls kind of come in is sort of something that I really struggle with, uh, with the base game and with the um, Sims 3 store stuff that is available. For example, like some of the wood paneling floors, I find that they are either too skinny and, uh, and you know, trying to get them to match to your other wood tones and all that can sometimes also be a bit of a journey to, uh, to really find something that matches because not everything that, uh, matches on an object will translate exactly to the walls and the floors. And that can sometimes be a point of frustration. Luckily, you know, at the same time, you don't need to match your woods exactly. And with country and Western and rustic styles, um, I think you can get away with that a little more. But I have found it in the past that when I was trying to like match a wood floor to a countertop that it wouldn't match exactly. And that can sometimes frustrate me. This is a lot more evident when I was doing the marble matching in the goth manor build on the part two episode no it was the part three episode when i was doing all the bathrooms and i was doing the master bathroom i was trying to match a bathtub marble texture to the wall and it just wasn't the exact same color despite it having the exact same color hex codes and uh being in the same lighting so it was just just one of those things where i was just a little frustrated with um but yeah kind of Getting distracted as I usually do when I, I record these sort of vocal, um, <laughs> when I do these audio recordings. <laughs> so, um, so yeah. 
Something I also want to take it back to as well is uh, in terms of the interior decorating, looking back on this lot and with the way that the bar is laid out, I should have definitely been adding in more rugs. Specifically, I should have tried experimenting more with the um, with the like fake animal rug that I was using in the Goth Manor a lot. And I should have just tried to place that with a cow pattern splashed over it or um, or, you know, just create my own custom carpet with cow pattern splashed over it. That would have been an all right approach because when looking at the floors and when looking at the walls and all that, like there is an abundance of wood. Um, yeah, there's an abundance of wood everywhere. And that is something to be completely expected and played with when using rustic and country western uh, interior styles but I definitely needed to break it up a little more with some more animal print and that would have been nice to just kind of have here as well um, or it could have been like a starry uh, carpet but I don't think that's gonna work I like the way that the stars ended up on the walls anyways so yeah that's something that I will be going back to edit whenever I do this midtown edit episode which again won't be for a long time here but luckily um, throughout this whole SimCity project, I've kept a notebook and I've been keeping score of where I want to take the series and everything. So it's not like I am, um, it's not like I'm losing track of it. And the vocal reminders in these episodes also help me as well, because I do rewatch all of the, um, episodes before I do an edit episode of some kind. So, so yeah, uh, that is certainly going to be on the, uh, on the, chopping block or on my list of things to do i keep calling it a chopping block for some reason but yeah to add in more rugs or uh, more carpets that use animal print will certainly be something that i will um continue to remind myself over when i was placing the special effects machines in this one i believe i mentioned it in the last episode when i was doing saturn but i really want to try and keep certain special effects associated with certain clubs so with Saturn, I use a combination of fog and the lasers. With the 13th floor, I just used fog because it felt more eerie that way. With this one, I am making the special effects sparkles. I was originally thinking it was going to be confetti, but when I decided on the name being All Stars and Cowboys for this bar build, um, it, you know, there was no other option to really choose uh, when having a name like that other than the sparkles uh, special effects. Um, Back when I did the Aquarius Poolside Club build, like the special effects that I used there was bubbles because that makes sense for the lot. So here we're using sparkles because again, it just makes sense for this lot build as well. Um, so yeah, very happy with the way that looks. And when I was play testing it as well, it also felt nice to, uh, to get those sparkles just kind of sh uh, shimmering throughout the lot. It adds a lot more intrigue and uh, dynamicity to it as well. So that was certainly something that was much appreciated uh, throughout this build. Um, if there was any kind of uh, another thing that I should also probably edit in as well is adding in more cacti motifs. Um, I know that there's some cactus plants that came with the Lucky Palms world. And, uh, and there's some like plant objects that use uh, cacti as well. That's certainly something that I need to revisit and redo because even though, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a huge cactus in the middle of the bull riding station. And I believe that the Western backdrops also use some cacti plants as well. So it's like, it's something that I failed to actually build upon in terms of a motif throughout this build. And that's certainly something that I will look into uh, adding in when I get around to filming the edit episode for this lot. So, so yeah, um, that will certainly be on the horizon there. So if you're a little disappointed that I didn't add as much cacti as I should have, well, I do apologize for that. I really should have added more cactus plants, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, for now it'll serve as a, uh, as another task to do whenever I get around to the Midtown edit episode. Um, the only other thing that I might consider doing is downloading some wall, uh, murals, like some huge ones, like some street art wall murals. As much as I want to encourage like Sims with the street art skill to just kind of paint their own murals around the town 
and around the uh, inner uh, city neighborhoods. Um, you know, I, I know I already explained about this a little earlier before in the episode, but I definitely would love to have like a really large wall mural on the side of the building, on the western side of the building, because I absolutely added nothing on the western side of the building and it's blank. And on one hand, I feel like that is realistic. Like you do see uh, buildings like this in inner city neighborhoods that have that blank wall that you know, a developer could attach another building to if they develop the lot right beside it. Um, but yeah, there's a big blank wall that I kept as, uh, as you know, part of a realistic interpretation of this set of low rise buildings. And so to me, because I know the nature of the game and because there will never be a wall to wall uh, set of lots here, I would love to have that filled with a wall mural of some sort and if i have to go outside of the sims 3 store which i definitely will have to i'll definitely actually take a look and see what's out there if it is even out there for some nice street art wall murals that i could just kind of place um in that blank spot there if not i am actually okay with leaving it blank it's just so much of an opportunity that i don't see why i wouldn't at least seek out it so if you have any uh, suggestions for street art wall murals that you know of uh that's somewhere out there in the internet universe from the sim uh for the sims 3 feel free to drop that suggestion in the comment section below overall like when it came to the interior decor of all stars and cowboys i wanted to make sure to place in some stars there and seeing as how i was you know kind of basing this off of country bars and rustic bars and all that and because i felt like this had like a really american flair to it i made these stars red white and blue uh just to kind of represent the american influences into this and i felt like it just kind of felt the theme there especially considering that I took Texas as a little bit of my inspiration here and there so yeah the stars were colored red white and blue for that very uh, same purpose it, just to pay that um, just to like recognize America as a part of the reference scheme there um, aside from that like another thing that I was kind of experimenting with was using gingham powder uh, patterns <laughs> or like yeah gingham patterns and i can barely say that so um it's the one that looks like picnics <laughs> it's like what all the picnic blankets are uh used as a pattern and so i just used that for some of the bar stools and i also used a bunch of different color of cow um cow patterns as well that came with the sims 3 and thankfully with the creative style 2 uh tool i can actually um place that pretty much anywhere i want if i so chose but yeah, um, I think like when it came to country and western themes here and rustic themes, I probably could have taken this a lot further than um, than what I had done. And the thing with saying that and just like looking over my work and just like criticizing it, it's just that I'm not too sure how much further I could have taken it. Like I, I know I could have, I just don't know where I would take it is really what I mean to say. And yeah, that's kind of where... Um, that's kind of where viewer feedback is important because if there's like a certain um, thing of inspiration that I can get from someone's feedback, I'll certainly look into uh, editing this lot with that feedback in mind. Um, so yeah, the cow prints and the gingham made an appearance and because this isn't a seasonal lot and because they are technically named heat lamps, I added in those heat lamps into the patio just to kind of... Um, you know, to show you guys that I'm not completely inhumane to my Sims, even though we do only have seven year win uh, seven day winters in uh, in my games here. So I put in some of those like heat lamps, which are actually uh, just stand uh, outdoor lights into the game. I colored them as flames so that, you know, hopefully they can just imagine the heat that comes off them. I wish there were actual heat lamps in the game. Uh, when it when seasons was released but we never got those and you know that's okay we can't can't have everything but um <laughs> but also like with the game mechanics of freezing to death and all that it's very hard for sims to actually freeze to death and i've purposefully killed sims off by trying to get them to freeze to death and it's very hard to do so especially if you ch uh, play with motive streets and uh with free will on <laughs> so so yeah it's very hard to kill sims um trying to get them to freeze to death but when you do 
Um, it happens, but it takes a very long time, even if you do have them in the worst case scenarios. Anyways, I'm just trying to defend myself here in that those mixologists that are working outdoor on that outdoor patio will likely never freeze to death despite them working out there for hours on end. And the heat lamps are there just to kind of show you guys that I've thought about that. <laughs> Alrighty, so few things that are happening uh, down the pipeline here. Um, as I was building this lot, I was taking into consideration like how the rest of this Sim City uh, build series is going to be. And I really, I really will explain more of that in uh, the next episode. But, um, but the only reason for that is because I really haven't uh, nailed down the details as to how I want to carry out this series going forward. And don't worry, it has nothing to do with the frequency of me posting um, speed build videos and what have you, but rather it has to do with like what I'm actually building here. But anyways, I'll get into that in uh, the next episode when I have decided on the details and the direction that I'm taking going forward. Um, speaking of the next episode, uh, we are doing yet another community lot build, and that'll about do it for the western block of Midtown. And, you know, uh, by the end of the next episode, we will have finished like half of Midtown. And I know I've got about three more lots to go. So the other half of Midtown has yet to be constructed. And that's really where I'm kind of thinking that I might have to change direction in terms of how this Sims 3, uh, or sorry, how this Sim City build series is going to be built out going forward it's just because um there's a lot to do <laughs> and i want to try to balance this uh series out as best as i can but yeah the next episode we are going to be building out a corner lot that just lies directly south from the gas district and directly east of this lot here um it's going to be a taller lot i think i already spoken about it uh in the beginning of today's episode but it's going to be five floors whereas this one was a four-story building attached to a three-story building, whereas the other, uh, whereas the next episode is actually going to be a five-story uh, corner lot build. And right now, as at the time that I am recording this episode, I am kind of in the middle of it and finding some challenges in the actual layout of the exterior because I knew the exact color scheme that I wanted. I just, you know, I, I'm just really struggling with the exterior, and I think it has a lot to do with the fire escapes that I had there. So. I'm hoping that I am not going to have to redo it because that would be uh, that would be disheartening and disenchanting. Like whenever I have to do whenever I have to redo something and give you like a new version or, you know, a second attempt at whatever, it's kind of a little it, it deflates me just a little bit because um, it's a lot of work that I usually put in before I realize that I have to start over and what have you. So I'm hoping that I won't have to do it for the next episode. But if I do, it's going to be paired with a cheery tone and, uh, <laughs> and you know, a journey of how the concept didn't match the execution and all that. But I'm hoping that I don't have to. I think I can still salvage it and still make it presentable at least. But yeah, it's going to also help to hide the Saturn build from the last uh, speed build episode. So I'm sure that you guys will be thrilled over the idea of hiding Saturn from uh from when you view the street uh viewing it westwardly but anyways we'll just kind of see how it all kind of pans out there for now i am just going to say um i'm just going to say that with all stars and cowboys i definitely feel like this is this build of mine is more like a strong seven or possibly like an eight out of 10 if I was going to rate myself. And I'm not too sure if I'm going to start doing that for now, but it's like a seven or an eight out of 10. Um, I think it's good. I think it does the job. I think that if I were to redo this or to edit it, I wouldn't have to completely gut the thing. I can work with what I've got. And I feel that I, could take the rustic and the country western themes just a little further depending on um i guess depending on the feedback that you guys give me and also like depending on how i feel after i revisit the lot but that is you know another episode for another time whenever i get around to doing like a midtown edit episode but anyways i'm getting way ahead of myself there at this time, I'm just going to say thank you so much for watching this episode. If you've enjoyed this build and if you've enjoyed this channel's content, then feel free to like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. 
Thank you again for watching, and I hope you have yourself a wonderful day.